okay, the no stall revert. Let's see what we're aiming for. Come up the ramp in your regular stance with your front foot on the nose. Execute the nose stall, swing your shoulders and your head round, let the board re-enter the ramp, slide the wheels round 180 as you come back in on the ramp, thus performing a revert and then ride away forwards in your regular stance. I've been wanting to learn reverts for quite a few weeks now, but every time I offer these up, I come up against the same psychological barrier, which is the lack of ability to commit to this 180 sliding maneuver as the board comes back in. It just feels like my feet are gonna shear off at ankle level as I come back in, and I just cannot commit to bring in the board round or even getting anywhere near close. So today I decided enough was enough. It was on with the pads onto my backyard mini ramp to give these a go. I recorded a video on the no stall a few months back. So if you're interested in the nitty gritty of getting into the no stall, you might wanna check that out. As I already had this no stall entry squirreled away, it allowed me to focus on the mechanics of getting the revert part to happen. The main thing I had to overcome was committing back into the ramp and trying to get the board to spin round 180 degrees whilst keeping my feet on the board. When I finally did, all hell broke loose. Oh my gosh, there were a fair few thrills and spills and I ended up with quite a battle on my hands. Mikey, let's talk through some of the main issues I was having with the revert segment. Number one was committing to coming back in, but the board not really pivoting around at all and then spooning off the back. I found the remedy for this and probably the key point for the whole manoeuvre was the squaring of the shoulders and the looking of the head 90 degrees back into the ramp just prior to letting the nose slip off the coping. That movement of the shoulders, bringing them in line with the coping, set up the hips ready to spin the board round. And at that point, I found I could push down on my back leg, bring the board down onto the ramp, and at that point, could end up with the board in line with the coping on the ramp. As I found coming back in so scary to start with, I made it my goal to see if I could spin the board 90 degrees round and come back down the ramp like a snowboarder heel side, see if I could just get into that position. The next issue I was having was getting the board to slide 180 on the wheels. I found the remedy for this was keeping the shoulders moving through the turn but understanding the foot pressures needed to get the board to slide on the ramp. And those were a little bit counterintuitive. So in the nose stall, all the weight is on your front foot. Then you need to weight the back foot to bring the board down onto the coping and try and keep more weight on the back foot. Keep that front foot on the nose nice and light. So that would spin the nose wheels round and let them slide as you came back through. As of a snowboard, if you put more weight on your back foot, the nose will spin out down the slope and vice versa. So trying to do this 180 sliding spin, you're gonna need more weight on the back foot to keep the board sliding through and then coming out. The next issue I was having was spooning off the back or spooning off to the side. And I found the key point there was to commit my head and shoulders slightly into the ramp, 
prior to committing to the revert. Again, this was counterintuitive because it felt like, whoo, you want to stay away from the danger. But by committing your head and shoulders into the ramp and also doing that squaring of the shoulders alongside the coping, that allowed the whole board to spin and then you could get into that sliding position where you could concentrate on your foot pressures. Coming off to the side, I worked out was purely because I was trying to keep my knees too straight. My old pelican legs, once again, hindering progress. So trying to stay really compact as I went into the nose stool, nice soft knees, and then trying to keep the knees soft all the way through the manoeuvre, right the way to the end, really helped me stay nice and close to the board and help the whole manoeuvre to work. After a bit more practice, I felt confident I wasn't going to kill myself. So to force the commitment levels, I whipped off my knee pads, got stuck in and managed to ride away from a few. Following on from this progress, I was eager to test my skills on a steeper, taller ramp. So I nipped down to the local indoor skate park and oh my gosh, it was like starting all over again. I found the steepness and the extra height really intimidating. I think it would be fair to say that I'd never be able to commit to a no-stall revert from scratch on this ramp. It's just too scary. But after a while, I summoned the courage to commit to a few and got myself into another right old battle. This taller, steeper mini ramp really highlighted any areas of poor technique. So I found all the key points I identified on my backyard mini ramp were brought into sharper focus. I found I needed to keep my knees nice and bent when I got into the nose stall, be nice and aggressive with the head and shoulders to initiate coming back off of the coping. As I slid down the mini ramp, I tried to stay compact avoid the old pelican legs, keep the knees bent. The plywood was slightly more slippy than my painted backyard mini ramp surface. So I found the foot pressures were slightly more nuanced coming back in. I didn't have to be quite as aggressive with my back foot pressure and not quite as light footed with my front foot pressure. That span round quite nicely as long as my head and my shoulders were brought in line with the coping and I kept that manoeuvre going. As a bit of a bonus manoeuvre, I wondered if it was possible to revert the opposite direction. So front side to the coping, spinning backwards down the ramp. <laughs> to do this, I decided to put a little bit of a lay back in just to make it slightly less intimidating. A while back, I recorded a video on the front side rock and roll with a layback in it. So I'm already au fait with that feel of maneuver, dabbing the coping, keeping my head and shoulders out into the ramp, looking round and then spinning back down. I offered up the no stall version, which is one step more committed, but exactly the same feel and order of movements to get this to come back round. And oh my gosh, again, all hell broke loose and I entered in to another battle. the key points to getting this one to work 
was to really bend my knees when I got into the nose stool, keep my back leg right up underneath my ass, and just have the fingers of my hand on the coping, thus keeping my body weight out into the transition. To initiate the revert, look with the head and shoulders and then push off the hand and keep pushing off the hand so that your body weight goes in to the transition. At that point, you can then just reorder your foot pressure, slide back down the transition and ride away. Okay, that's it for the no stall reaver. <laughs> Those were a lot of fun. Let's talk through the key points in real time. So approaching the ramp in your regular stance with your front foot on the nose. Pump up the ramp, execute the nose stall, look round with your head, square your shoulders across the coping whilst committing into the ramp. Let the board slide off of the coping, put your weight on your back foot to get the wheels down onto the ramp. Keep your front foot nice and unweighted to let those front wheels slide round. Keep your knees nice and bent throughout this maneuver and then ride away. I'm looking forward to doing loads more practice on the revert with the goal of taking it to even bigger and steeper ramps. I'm also looking forward to trying the tail stall revert, which is a mirror image of the no stall revert, come into the tail stall and then spin the back wheels out so that you re-enter the ramp fakey. <laughs> Those could be a bit of a challenge. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe I make new videos every week. As ever, my name's been John Bishop and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate.